Hello and welcome to the Crypto Jungle. My name is Baloo and here on the channel, we keep crypto simple. Uh, if you're wanting to learn how to trade and invest in cryptocurrencies, then you come to the right place. This is the most honest and realistic channel inside of YouTube and Twitch. So if you're tired of all the other uh, YouTube influencers telling you to buy literally everything, then uh, hit the subscribe button. I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So in today's video, we're just going to do a little bit of a market update. There's a few altcoins which uh, I think are going to perform very well, some of which are not a surprise, some of which you may have not heard of. Um, so we're going to dive into the charts on that. But most importantly is I want to talk uh, about timing and like uh, convicting to a trade, when to use leverage, how to kind of, um, you know, trade alongside the trend because currently we're not out of the woods yet so let me just kind of jump into the charts here and show you exactly what i'm talking about so we're going to start off with the king of all cryptocurrencies and that is bitcoin so bitcoin on the daily we are inside of this kind of accumulative structure that has bearish characteristics to it um if we're looking at the localized trend, you can see, you know, we're always trading with the trend and that's where my bearishness is coming from. You know, we have a high, we have a low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, our first localized lower low. And so now we're very vulnerable and it's important to realize that until we confirm a higher high or at least a higher low, we have to be very apprehensive with taking on any new positions. For me, I have not, uh, I did not sell much out of the shakeout. I did a, a very low leverage and low valued short during the downside of the move. And uh, that was pretty much it. As far as my altcoin allocation, I, I really didn't touch it. I, I knew that there would be a rebound and quite a rebound indeed. You know, the altcoins are clearly poised for some serious price appreciation because their ability to outperform Bitcoin right now is actually very, very good. Where we were back here, you know, my portfolio is worth more now down in this area than it was before the shakeout. So altcoins clearly are the winners. Altcoins are very strong. So what's, what am I worried about? I'm worried about where we are right now. We're underneath the resistance. Let me kind of clean up this a little bit so I can kind of properly explain. So, you know, right here back at the buyer's climax, we set a line. This is basically identifying the trading range. And this trading range is, you know, we're underneath the resistance of this trading range currently. So we have to be very apprehensive with any new positions that we're taking on. Uh, for those who are in my VIP group, you've probably noticed that the flow of trading setups that I'm posting in VIP has slowed down quite a bit. So I, I'm going to take this opportunity to just address that. I want you guys to be successful. I want you guys to have good entries. And yes, we're seeing a lot of altcoins rebound very quickly. And there are people who are in the group who are, you know, taking these entries. Um, but I, I, you know, we have a lot of different styles inside of the group, all from high frequency trading down to long term investing. So I want to make sure that when I post, it has a high probability of success. You know, I will not post for the sake of posting. I will post when I feel that the market is in a bullish posture and we can capitalize on that kind of stuff. So, you know, everything that we've seen in terms of the rebound is positions that I already had before the shakeout occurred. We need a higher low, at least. If we are unable to rally and break out this high, closing a daily candle above this high, we're going to at least need to confirm a higher low. Um, where that higher low might come in is probably down in this area at the 50k level. I would love it if we got a retracement down there and held it as strong support because that would be kind of, uh, well, I would love it if we just broke out the high on, on the daily. That would be the most bullish scenario, but a more realistic one that can kind of bring a lot of confidence back into the market is the second one where we kind of, you know, we get trapped under this resistance and we maybe retrace down to 50k, whether it's a wick, whether it's a candle body close, we don't know. We never try to predict the market we trade alongside of the market so when the market neutralizes itself like this where you have that first sign of a potential for a turnaround you have to be very careful i'm looking at uh you know i don't hold any more leverage currently my leverage positions are done i hold no options i hold no futures i hold no leverage inside of my portfolio whatsoever and i'm actually looking for opportunities to maybe even hedge 
a larger cash position than I already have with uh, the potential that I, I may even enter a short um, just to kind of lock in some of the prices that we're at currently. The area that I'm most concerned about is kind of up in the $60,000 level. So if we take a look at this area right here, you know, we have a lot of resistance up here. And uh, if we can break through the resistance that we're at currently on the buyer's climax level, I would expect to see a lot of resistance here at around 61 to $62,000. Uh, if we can break through that, great. You know, then we can flip bullish, then we can look for those setups, then we can make those entries, then we can even play with leverage if the, if the, presented, uh, if the opportunity presents itself. But until we get those confirmations, I'm definitely uh, proceeding with caution. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now with what I'm seeing inside of Bitcoin and how that works out with the market. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, Darius. How's it going? Uh, Islea, Isla, Isla, Island of Peace. Welcome. Uh, TRBO, welcome. So, you know, I just wanted to start off the stream giving not like a warning because we we can't predict the market direction. We can only position for it, uh, but just food for thought because the bullishness inside of altcoins is so powerful that it's easy to kind of think that uh, the correction's over and that we're, we're ready for higher levels. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the most popular altcoins in the space right now and uh, talk about their bullish posture and potential downsides if we do end up uh, needing a little bit more of a correction. So I'll start off with Ethereum. So Ethereum is up at around 30, 31.80. We had this uh, level chosen with my PNF targets. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'll, you'll never see me do point and figure counts on stream. They take too long. It's it's a process. It's part of the Wyckoff methodology that I teach in my group. So if you're wanting to learn kind of a more advanced way to determine price projections using point and figure charts, we're more than happy to teach you that, but it does not make for good entertainment material. So you'll never see me do it on stream. Um, so yeah, uh, we did hit both of those targets. Our initial one was hit back here, and then we've extended up here, and it looks like we're we're encountering some some resistance here. We're also in getting into that overbought territory. So as it stands with Ethereum right now, there's definitely room to the downside. Um, the last area of support, you know, we are in blue sky breakout, so the support levels are kind of uh, underdeveloped, but I would be looking somewhere around 26, and that's close enough to 25 to call that psychological level of $2,500 uh, a kind of good area to look for with the worst case scenario down at 22. <sighs> Audius has mad volume. Any takes on that? Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the community request charts once I get through some of these, uh, you know, higher performing, uh, more market adopted assets first. But yeah, we can take a look at Audius, part of the Solana ecosystem. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing in terms of Ethereum. Now, what I'm most bullish on with Ethereum is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. You know, even if we do have to encounter a little bit of a pullback, I'm still macro bullish on the space as a whole. Uh, and this Bitcoin Ethereum chart is just such a fantastic chart. You know, for those who have been watching the channel for a while, you know that we've been watching this chart. You know, this is not this is not a secret. This is not part of my VIP, uh, you know, uh, group here. This is this is public uh, information that I'm happy to provide with the community. Uh, if you kind of like this style of analysis, then don't forget to subscribe. But we've reached our first target. I have two targets here. So the first one was 0.05 per Ethereum or per uh, 0.05 Bitcoin per Ethereum. My next target is actually up at 0.08 Bitcoin per Ethereum. Um, we're very strong. This rally is incredibly strong and it looks a little overextended. So we'll likely have to come back down and test, likely testing the area of the previous breakout here. So anticipate that kind of uh, potential. You know, long story short, with a lot of the assets that we're gonna be reviewing and talking about today, I see entries nowhere. There's no clean entries yet. There was entries prior and you know we talked about those entries inside of my group. If you're not already in VIP, I encourage you to check out the links down below uh, so we can get you poised in these positions before they move. Uh, you know you got to trade against the herd. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's there's no clean entries. We're just seeing nice ticking to the upside. We're in profit taking territory. We are not in uh, in new position territory. So uh, Ethereum BTC, man, I love this chart. You guys know that I love this chart. It's just I'm very excited for what's going on with Ethereum and the upgrades that are coming to the network with EIP 1559 are going to be quite profound to the liquid supply of Ethereum because as it stands right now, we have a little bit of burning. Uh, I mean if you can even call it burning we don't even really it's just like a lock actually we don't have burning of ethereum just yet uh, we have transaction fees going to the miners and then we have some deep freeze like locking your liquidity in permanent style contracts um, so there's a ton of liquidity in the middle in terms of ethereum and we need to get to the point where we kind of bookend that liquidity with its use the tradable liquidity is in the middle and it's vast. It's 120, I think it's 120, 140 million uh, circulating supply currently. So there's a ton of Ethereum out there. It's actually impressive that we're up at the levels that we're at. But with the upgrade, the London hard fork, and we get that implementation of EIP 59, which isn't fully confirmed that it's coming out with the London hard fork. But anyways, um, it's, it's highly likely that that is released as a part of that hard fork. Uh, we're going to have a burning aspect to the block size. So the block rewards are going to have a burning uh, characteristic to them, which is going to reduce the higher end of the gas, uh, the higher end of the scale as we kind of burn Ethereum for gas. And then we're also going to implement that uh, bridge into ETH 2.0 and kind of get a little bit more of the DeFi locking protocols that's going to remove that circulating supply from Ethereum and put it into essentially cold storage that's very hard to remove. So both ends of the liquidity are going to counteract that middle highly liquid part, highly tradable part of Ethereum. And it's gonna be a supply shock. And when you have that supply shock and demand is increasing, the only thing that can result is higher prices. So I'm very bullish on Ethereum. I've got irresponsibly high <laughs> price targets for Ethereum that I'm not comfortable sharing on stream, um, but they're high. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum's kind of competitor, and that is Cardano. So Cardano got hyped quite a bit. Our Cardano has moved up quite a bit. We've had a huge extension in Cardano. The last responsible time to kind of participate in Cardano was down here at about 40 cents. And we're currently 230% up from that level. So a lot of price appreciation comes with a lot of taking profits. There's a lot of people who have made a lot of money in Cardano. If we have those uh, Cardano people that were, you know, accumulating sub 10 cents, they're sitting at uh, nearly 1000%, 10x their portfolio. They're going to take profits. That is adding a ton of supply that the market needs to absorb. And the price structure that I'm seeing in this localized area is very distributional. You know, I d we're in an uptrend, so I try to hold a bullish bias when we're in an uptrend and wait for those confirmations. But this move down here, I interpret this as a sign of weakness. You know, it's just up thrust down, up thrust down, up thrust down into sign of weakness. And now we're curling over underneath the all time the all time high resistance. Yeah, I'm certainly not uh, looking to enter Cardano personally. I, I would be much more willing to enter down at the dollar level. But again, I think that this, this asset was hyped quite a bit. Let's give it a fair shot and let's take a look at the uh, Bitcoin pair on Cardano. Thank you for the follow. And let's take a look at Cardano BTC. So this is a much more bullish chart. I, I like this chart. And this is actually a chart that's... Uh, uh, kind of the reason as to why I think Cardano will do good this cycle. There's more, if the cycle does continue uh, to the upside, which, you know, I'm convicted that it will, but uh, if it does confirm and, and we start to head up, I think Cardano is going to be a recipient of higher prices, um, especially when compared to its uh, Bitcoin comparative. Bitcoin's kind of slowing down. Uh, you can still make money in Bitcoin, but the altcoins are certainly showing a lot of promise and they're showing a lot of ability to uh, recover quickly. Um, so we're kind of at a, a bull flag, essentially, with the Bitcoin pair. So let's kind of just stretch this out. You can almost look at it as a, a little bit of a reaccumulation after decline. So we need to overtake some of these levels to be able to kind of, you know, head back up into markup. But where it's postured right now on the top of this slanted trading range, I really try not to do these slanted trading ranges, but it just fits so well on this pair. Um, we're in the backup phase. So the next phase is actually kind of that, that more, uh, that more, uh, 
fast, that, that quicker price appreciation that we get um, with, uh, you know, as you leave a bottoming pattern on any asset. So Cardano looks good. You know, I don't hold any Cardano and I plan not to, to be perfectly honest. You know, it's, it's just, it is perfectly fine to be a viewer of the space develop. And that's something I've been thinking about lately because, you know, I've, I found myself, uh, I found myself holding too many altcoins, but I've almost heard, I, I've also heard a quite a bit of feedback, feedback. Can I talk today? <laughs> I've heard a quite a lot of feedback from my uh, group participants that they find themselves quite diversified inside of this space. And that's because blockchain is very exciting. You know, there's a ton of innovation and we don't see the same levels of innovation occurring in other markets. So it's easy to get wrapped up in the story and want to participate in so many different projects. It's okay to just watch the space develop. It's okay to just watch blockchain kind of uh, slowly penetrate itself into the world of finance and commerce. It's okay to just watch this stuff develop. You don't have to participate in everything. If you buy quality projects, trade quality projects, and you know keep your portfolio small, it's very hard to manage, actively manage trades in excess of five different assets. Uh, the sweet spot is three. You know, and I'm not saying just hold three coins. I'm saying if you're planning on trading these coins, you know, three is is enough. You don't need to manage all of this stuff. You can make your investments, have your hodl positions. You can have your somewhat swing trade active account, and then you can have your kind of degenerate account where you can play. But uh, yeah, you know, really being uh, fluid and having the ability to pivot is really kind of. Uh, attached to your ability to uh, your ability to pivot is attached to how many assets you have if you need to set reset stop losses on 20 different things that you're trying to actively trade or if you're trying to like you know hedge with shorts on 20 different assets that you're actively trading good luck you are not going to be able to keep track of that so understanding your exposure and understanding how when you kind of you know get yourself involved with so many different projects at the same time you limit your ability to move in this market um so Consider that. I don't need to hold a position in Cardano. If you're very bullish on Cardano and it's a, one of your large positions, I think you're just fine. You know, it's fine. You're you're in an asset that will likely appreciate in value. I already have my smart contract platform and that is Ethereum. Wow, that was a lot of uh, words. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at VeChain. So VeChain's got kind of a bullish posture here. Uh, Reaccumulation after decline, you can kind of see this just ascending support line. We just have this very clean mean where we're just wanting to keep climbing this ladder. This is actually a characteristic that I like to see because it's indicating that the asset hasn't gone fully crazy yet. You know, we're still getting that fair market appreciation where people are willing to step in as a buyer and we're not seeing like massive, massive uh, moves, which tells me that VeChain got, has got some potential behind it. We have some some nice uh, price appreciation that is possible inside of VeChain. And yes, for those who know, I sold it four cents and I am kicking myself for it. Am I going to re-enter? No, there's there's other assets. My portfolio is structured in a very different way. Hey, you know, sometimes we earn and sometimes we learn. OK, so uh, now if we do take a move down in Bitcoin, I would expect to be bouncing around back inside of the inside of this channel here. So, you know, we were we might come down and test this. If we do get a failure, expect to come back down inside of the, uh, this area somewhere around 15 cents, something like that um, would be a good opportunity if, in fact, we do head lower. Uh, if we start breaking out some of the highs, well, that's a very different uh, scenario and uh, we're, we're full bull and basically Basically, you would just be adding to positions on any sort of significant pullback. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically uh, VeChain. So I covered Ethereum, very bullish. I hold it. I covered Cardano, don't hold it, but the chart looks good. Uh, VeChain, kicking myself for selling it. Chart looks good. Now I want to talk to you about a project that I am incredibly bullish on. Uh, it's I'm a little late to the party. I'm a, I'm okay with that. You know, there's so many assets out there that it's hard to do your homework and get convicted to a trade. But this one project has really leaned into the, the theory of what I am most excited about when I think about uh, the future of decentralized finance. 
uh, they are very geared towards making setting up an exchange easy, and it is referred to as the backend plumbing of uh, DeFi, and that is Serum. So Serum, we were buying Serum in my private group down at around $7, kind of averaged in a little bit. Uh, we had some dip buys in here. Uh, I took one dip buy, but then, you know, the trend was kind of shifting, so I stopped buying, uh, and we're we're doing quite well now. We're, we I think we hit a 2x from leaving on the SOS, leaving the accumulation. Now, you go do your own research, find out what Serum's about. But I've been saying for a very long time, you know, I'm, I'm most excited about decentralized finance and replicating the products that we have in traditional finance and bringing them to the blockchain. Uh, a lot of projects are doing some pretty interesting things, you know, like Uniswap is offering a place where you can, you know, have an automated market maker that can trade coins back and forth. Uh, Aave is offering lending. What Serum is trying to do is it's trying to integrate all of these separate smart contracts and create a trading platform so that you have all of the things that you may be accustomed to on a traditional centralized exchange, but on a decentralized exchange. So you would, on the surface, it would just look like basically FTX. If you haven't traded on FTX, it's a fantastic exchange. If you are wanting to sign up for FTX, follow the links down below and I can give you a discount on your trading fees. Um, but yeah, it's it's really interesting. You know, Sam Bankman Freed is really leaning into what it looks like to have a truly decentralized and competitive exchange. And Serum is kind of the back end of how that works. So yeah, we're uh, we're really liking uh, what we're seeing on that one. It's one of my largest altcoin positions uh, next to Ethereum. So I'm I'm quite I'm over <laughs> I'm irresponsibly ex exposed to this asset, and that is not financial advice. Everything on this channel is meant for entertainment purposes only. You know, there's going to be winners, there's going to be losers. I don't have a crystal ball. I just know what resonates with me and what I think is a good idea, and I like to place my trades. Uh, alongside of those ideas and and go from there all right so now we can get into kind of the uh, request side of the so show so this is where you guys uh, drop the charts that you want me to take a look at and we can go from there now keeping in mind that I may be bearish on some of these assets because the market is at an indecision point so you know even in the case of serum here like if if Bitcoin starts to crash <laughs> we're looking back down at eight bucks before uh, you know we have a, a good entry back inside of serum so there's significant downside if we if the market does turn so be very apprehensive with new new positions but i'm more than happy to take a look at that so let me just catch up on the chat here i think we had a request for audius five dollars he's muted yeah we should get a little bet going we should get some little tip jar down in the bottom there that's uh every time i uh show up muted for those who don't know i show up to the stream muted uh more often than i show up unmuted forgot to mute your mic uh yeah let's take a look at what's going on with audius so mad volume we'll take a look at the volume because volume can be interpreted many different ways audius on ftx fantastic exchange not joking Guys, if you don't have an FTX account, go sign up for an FTX account. It's the best. I mean, they don't have as many coins as Binance, but if you're going to be like uh, an educate, if you want to have the same instruments as an educated investor, a, sa a sophisticated investor, all of those more sophisticated uh, tools are on FTX. So yeah, we're in a beautiful position here on Audius. We have overtaken the, uh, oh, accidentally clicked the wrong button there. We've overtaken this uh, level of the trading range. Come on, give me my pen. There we go. This level of the trading range right here. We've we've overtaken that level and we're now sitting on it as support. Now, the rally off of that did not make a higher high. So we are still technically at a higher low. So even though we've overtaken some of these uh, resistance levels and are now sitting on them as support, uh, you want to be careful because we don't have a true continuation pattern. We don't have a true uh, change in the trend. We do have some candle body closes that are higher, but the wicks, you know, the price went there, the price went there. So until we can get above that, I think I would be reserved unless we can get down and retest some of these support levels. So if we do fall through, I would expect to find support somewhere around 250. 
So if you can get down in that area of around 250, I mean, we're kind of splitting hairs here. It's at 270. Um, I think you could get some good positions. Now, any entry, any new entry right now is basically coming with a stop loss. That would be my recommendation, you know, um, place a stop loss on it because the market is in a position where it could flip. It could flip bearish. So you don't want to make these new entries uh, and leave them exposed like, OK, I entered here and then the market turned. And now you, you know, you haven't uh, limited your risk appropriately, appropriately, you can limit risk with position sizing, and you can limit risk with stop losses. So depending on the asset and depending on the style of trader you are, uh, your use of those two ways to limit risk uh, may vary. But new positions right now, be very careful. Audius is looking good. Um, but that is contingent on the fact that we get a continuation inside of this market. Uh, let's take a look at Dodo. So yeah, Dodo coming in for who's recording dodo yud yeah yud it looks like you uh attempted to get the uh free month of the server but i need some more information from you so check your dms on the discord uh we got to get you signed up to get the free month and that's actually kind of a nice uh, segue for those who are wanting access to my uh trading group i'm offering a month a month for free now it's not too often that uh, people offer any sort of trial period inside of a trading group because of the amount of uh, content that exists inside of those. But I am convicted that you guys will not only like the content, but you'll want to stick around. So if you are interested in signing up for a free 30 day trial of my trading group, and I'm sure I'll get some comments in the uh, comments from some of my group participants to some of those individuals who can vouch for the quality of the group. I've been in many trading groups. I know what not to do. And I try to uh, really provide an environment that not only empowers you to make the right decisions, but uh, you know, allows you to make those decisions all by yourself. I want to get you to the point where you don't even need the group. Poor business model, but I'm here to really empower the investors so that, you know, there's so many predatory uh, practices inside of cryptocurrency that you really need to spend a lot of time on patience and education. And that's the culture that I promote inside of my group. Taking a look at Dodo. Okay. So we're on the daily. So nice recovery, but still a localized downtrend. We're not out of the woods yet, but this is this is a nice uh, trading range that we're in with a potential spring. The, the spring has fallen on low volume, so that's good. I would like to see a, a lower, a higher low down and around, uh, right around the $3 mark. So, you know, we don't just keep blasting off. Every time we overtake a resistance, we have to come back and test it as a support. That's what's considered healthy price action. When you have those extensions and those reactions that are making gains over time, that's a far better place to be as an investor and a trader than chasing those green candles that you know are 40% moves to the upside every candle. Um, it's very easy to lose money inside of that environment where when you find an environment like this, as long as you're patient and convicted to the fundamentals and technicals of the trade, you can do very well. Patience is very important inside of this, at least for the style that I trade on. I'm a swing trader. I, I do large swings. I hold through a lot of volatility. I hold, I mean, I held through most of that shakeout. I don't get too creative. I know that the money is made in the long term holds. Uh, so you can kind of, if you're more of an investor and you've seen a lot of success with, the, with just holding tokens, you can take that next step and learn about better entries, better exits. Um, in a long-term investor mindset because cryptocurrency is so innovative. There's no point in being a day trader inside of this space because you win one day, you might win a week straight, but it only takes one loss to blow your account out, um, it, you know, depending. Okay, so Dodo, yeah, you know, I want to see it kind of reach down this level and get a test. This test should come on high volume. If we get high volume defending this area, we'll probably get our SOS. And when we get our SOS, we'll, we'll go to the top of the box before heading into markup. But there's no panic. You know, I have a position in this, but uh, I don't even know what got me into this position. I think it was back here. Yeah, we saw the jump across the creek, so I took a position. It went down below, and now we're back up at my entry. But, uh, you know, it's not a large position on this one. I think Dodo is kind of unique. You know, it's it's a it's a decentralized uh, liquidity aggregator, much like 1inch. So 1inch has gotten a lot of adoption. 
does it kind of just run with it and nobody wants to use Dodo? I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a competitor. Competitor to one inch. So yeah, you know, it's nothing to uh, run out the door and go buy right now. Uh, we're just waiting for some more bullish confirmation on this one. Oh, Harmony. I thought, come on, you didn't we already look at this one? Or did we not? Did I not have time? So pretty volatile environment that Harmony's in. Localized downtrend. We did overtake this resistance level right here. Yeah, you know, it's in a localized downtrend. I kind of, I feel like a lot of people made a lot of money, so it's going to likely be in reaccumulation for a while. If this is an asset that you're holding, I think there's no reason to panic. Like, there's no reason to exit a position or anything, but I don't see a good enough reason to be entering a position just yet either. Um, it could easily go down. It could easily go up. We're, we're in a local downtrend, so we're making lower lows and lower highs. Until that trend changes or flattens out to some extent, there's really no reason to get super bullish on the technical side of what's going on with Harmony. A lot of people made a lot of money on it. You know, at the last backup, the all-time high was like nearly an, an 8x. So people made a lot of money. I don't know. It's uh, you're going to need to kind of. Uh, I don't think that there's a, a very good setup here. I think that there's better ones. Uh, you trust huge pump. What are the price targets? You trust is pumping, man. That's one of my old ledger. Uh, that's one of my old ledger holds. That's just one that's been sitting on my ledger untouched for freaking years. Uh, you know, we all learned many lessons in the uh, last bear market, and you trust is just my little social experiment to see. Uh, how do these recoveries work? Do these recoveries actually work? Should you just be holding Bitcoin? I think one of my members actually did a comparison for what uh, if you purchased an index of the top 100 coins last cycle, halfway through the cycle, compared to holding Bitcoin halfway through the cycle. If you just bought Bitcoin and held that through the bear market, you would be up more than if you uh, bought those 100 coins, uh, the top 100 coins, and uh, and held those through the bear market. So. That the last cycle was a lot different. You know, we do have a lot of innovation this cycle. The last cycle was a lot of promises. Now we're seeing those, you know, things come in. We're seeing delivery on a lot of those promises in the form of the decks. But uh, yeah, you trust. I think it's in a good spot to just continue to higher levels. Let's go down to the eight hour here. Uh, it's yeah, it's just getting going. This is kind of a. It's going to come back down. You know, there's a lot of supply coming in at this area. Uh, expect a retracement somewhere down to the levels of the highs down in this area, somewhere around 75 cents. You know, we're at 82. That's not much of a drop. If Bitcoin uh, behaves, um, you know, we might uh, get to overtake those levels with the natural amount of supply that's coming in currently. But if it starts to break down and we start going below this, then we could be talking about distribution. Huge spread on this, by the way. My goodness from the low to the high we're already at 140 percent so very liquid very easy to move um and that's that counts both ways you know a lot of people they want to get into the low cap gems low caps move easily up and down so it comes with a lot of risk so uh proceed with caution but you know you could look for an entry down in this area if we do kind of get back to that area but any new entries you're going to want to limit risk with a stop loss or position size what's going on successful the mic was on <laughs> the mic was on i'm very far behind on the chat everybody my apologies uh senpai we took a look at rose uh last stream i guess that was three days ago now um I'm going to skip it. Sorry, man. Senpai, I think you're in my Discord, actually. Just ping me. Ping me and we'll talk about Rose. Wonderwall, Mr. Wonderful, welcome in. Ava and Dash. So I can tell you right off the bat, I've been charting Dash uh, many times inside of the stream. And... Uh, I, I think it's in a very bullish posture. I think that Dash is just kind of getting going. I don't know what's going on with Dash. That's one of my more technical plays. I'm just trading that one based on technicals. Uh, but it's in a pretty good spot. But let's take a look at Ava. Was that Travala? Let's 
Let's go to the daily, establish a trend. So a uh, bit of a change of character here. So this one will probably reaccumulate for a while. So, you know, we have our buyer's climax up here. You know, we, we concluded the train ch uh, trend, change of character, buyer's climax down to our automatic reaction. Oops, dyslexic. AR, automatic reaction down here. That sets the width of the new trading range. So we're gonna have to monitor what goes on with that, but uh, it's phase A of its new trading range. So there's no rush with this one. I think that this one's gonna accumulate for a while. So, you know, some of these travel coins may gain popularity. You know, maps.me is one that I'm kind of very bullish on. And I, I believe this is Travala. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is Travala, which is a travel company. So they might be launching their own cryptocurrency. But yeah, we're range bound here. So we're going to need to observe the price action. If we kind of reaccumulate down in this zone right here, I think that could be very healthy, kind of creating a resistance line below. If we break above that, we're off to the races. But uh, there's no point in rushing in on this one. No point. It will be in reaccumulation, or it will show a downtrend. So if you are in it, uh, make your own decisions. I can't tell you guys what to do with your trades. I can only show you what I'm seeing in the charts. The trading decisions need to come from you. And if you're struggling with the strategy side, we focus a lot of that in the group. Links below. KuCoin shares. Yeah, MAPS is doing very good. And it's sustainable, I believe. As long as we maintain the current environment, I think that that is a very sustainable price action that we're seeing in MAPS. I need to pour myself some water. Got something in the back of my throat. So KuCoin, looks like I've already done some drawings on this one, so we'll, we'll refresh my memory on what we were looking at. Now, the interesting thing that's going on with a lot of these exchange based tokens is their implementation of their, you know, smart chains. I don't know if, uh, you know, KuCoin all along the way has been copying Binance. So let me, Essex Hammer, can you tell me, uh, are they doing anything with uh, trying to emulate that kind of decentralized system? Are they, is there like a, a KuCoin smart chain that uh, is trying to emulate what Binance is doing? Because KuCoin has always been copying Binance. They're just, you know, oh, Binance is doing this. That, that's their whole business model is copy Binance. Um, so if they are,